Amantia muscaria. If you eat it, it's poisonous. A big giant mushroom like that one right back there, or a teeny tiny little mushroom. You just go to like a firewood place and you get there before they chop up the stumps and most likely they'll just give it to you for free because it was too big to fit in the cutting machine. Whoa! Whoa! And this is what we're making today. Check out the free section of Craigslist or your local firewood lot. We got ours at Lyman's in Encinitas. I wanted to hollow out our stump and I had no idea how much time it would take or how labor intensive and dangerous the job would be. Disclaimer, do not try this. It took over a month to carve the stump and we could have lost fingers using the chainsaw. We strongly suggest skipping this part, or if you're super patient, just use a chisel. Then trace and cut a piece for the bottom so that you can attach the wheels. It took like a month to hollow out the stump, and it was dangerous. And we just traced around a bucket. Decide how big you want your cushion to be, then trace and cut a circle from scrap plywood. The upholstery foam is super expensive, so I got the really thin one, and I just kept cutting it, and I used all the scraps, and I built like this magic mushroom mountain thing. Cut circles from upholstery foam to fit your plywood. Then add smaller circles and fill in the sides with your scrap pieces, attaching with a glue gun or tacky glue until you have a mushroom dome shape. Then cover everything with a sheet of batting this will smooth out all of the lumps. I just found two red sweaters and I cut them up and then I used like this side right here and this side right here and then I kind of pieced them together in like an X formation. I've been hand stitching things for a long time because my mom would not let me borrow her sewing machine and I knew that I couldn't hand stitch this. This is the sewing machine that my mom let me borrow. She got it at a yard sale and it's a $5 miniature sewing machine. We did it, but it was challenging. My intern Stacy is the expert sewer. She is the one who figured out how to make this tiny machine work for us. I had to pull on the fabric while she sewed the sweaters together. And then once you have it sewed together, then you stretch it over the foamy mountain and then you take the staple gun and you staple it to the back of it. You can see here how we piece the two sweaters together. Wool is best for needle felting. I found mine at the thrift store for six dollars a piece. Looks like cotton candy or something. And look, it just starts pulling out. Look at it's all ooh, ghosty. These are special needle felting needles right here. They have like a little protective thing on them and I don't know if you can tell but it's like a whole bunch of like little barbs sticking out and then you start poking it. You have to poke it in there a lot for a long time. I found it highly enjoyable. I cut paper dots first and pinned them into place. Then I used a canning lid as a guide for my needle felting. Cookie cutters work well also. Using your special needle, begin poking the wool into place. You can find supplies at your local knitting shop or online. So that's it. We're all done and I will see you in the next video. I post new crafty videos every week, so subscribe if you want to see more DIY. Leave a comment and let me know if you'd like to see a tour of my new craft room and filming studio. And check out my blog for more details on this tutorial. Thanks for watching.